far right. <laughs> the far right. And how the far right had a protest outside the custom house around August of this year. Remember? And they all met about well over a thousand people met outside the custom house. Nobody socially distanced, nobody wore masks. It might be interesting to find out how many of those have now become critically ill with COVID-19. Could we get an answer to that one? Because they, all of those people who went to that protest, I was actually asked would I like to speak of it. I decided not to because I don't go to these things. My protest is not wearing a mask at the shops. That's good enough for me. But um, there were speakers there. There was, Del I think Dolores Cahill was there. There were others there. Have, have they become sick? No, I mean, you know, the answer is obviously no. So what they're doing in their own way is the same as what Golfgate did and what RTE Gate did, except they're not hypocrites. That's the difference. That's the cardinal, fundamental, all-pervasive difference. That's the difference of me. I don't wear a mask. I don't socially distance, but I've never... You know, what ha Harris could have gone a bit further in that. I mean, that what he wrote today is excellent. What he wrote today is superb. I hope people share my video. I hope people quote him. It was absolutely... You know, here we have a mainstream journalist in the biggest circulation Sunday newspaper in Ireland, the Sunday Independent, calling them out. But... He didn't go quite far enough and say that what RTE and the golfers are doing is making a positive mockery of all of those poor people in this country who couldn't go to funerals, couldn't go to hospital, had appointments cancelled, couldn't meet family and friends, weren't able to sit with a dying loved one. They are making a mockery of those people. A mockery of them. Harris could have gone slightly further by saying that, but sure, we've done that out here in the alt scene. You know, and this is all pointing towards the direction of how successful the Irish alt media has been, how much the Irish alt media has achieved, much more than in any other English-speaking country. The Irish alt media here has really, really, really broken through the whole matrix of this, and they're terrified. It leads on to something else here. We must remember <clears throat> that those lying, hypocritical bullies in RTE, oh yeah, Harris should have said something else. He said, RTE have been spreading fear-mongering since March of this year, telling people, first of all, a lie that was mandatory to wear masks without explaining to people that there were legally uh, written in and exemptions which are not enforceable anyway. RTE never told anybody about the exemptions from wearing a mask, a mandatory, yeah, right, mandatory mask. It's like what Regina Doherty said, mandatory but not compulsory, bloody sure. But... Um, Harris could have gone that step further, you know, and said, look, RTE have been fear-mongering more than anyone else, even the goddamn Irish Times RTE have been worse than them, fear-mongering non-stop about COVID-19. And what that little hooli con conducted by John Williams and all of them proves that they know they're liars. They know they're telling lies. But sure, I told you that. You know, it, again, we have this situation where the op media is ahead of them, and we are ahead of them. We are ahead of them. I pulled up RTE on two things. When they said that Faradgar had made an unconditional apology in relation to smearing the whistleblowing doctors in Waterford, I watched to see what RTE was actually saying and what Faradgar had said. Faradgar had not apologised. He said, I apologise if it seems. That's not an apology. And a good journalist would have gone after him further for that. Faradgar is a criminal. He admitted in the White House to the fact that he fiddled around when he was a minister in government with the planning process down, I think, in Clare. And now he's also admitted in the Doyle to having, you know, fiddled with a, a selection process about four or five weeks ago. And now the latest that's coming out of Radker is that he instructed the Minister for Justice, Helen McEntee, who has not got two brain cells between her. Helen McEntee only got into the Doyle because her father committed suicide. She wrote in on pity points. He instructed McEntee to choose one person for the position of a Supreme Court judge. And others had sought it. Other members of the judiciary had sought it. The only person who was considered by McEntee was the one person who had not actually served as a judge. You know, this is why you need a republic with checks and balances against monsters like this. And now McEntee is beginning to 
to get a little bit of sympathy and pity online. She deserves nothing. She doesn't deserve the slightest modicum of sympathy or pity. Now, it's not relating to the fact that her father killed himself. It's relating to the fact that Faradkar is now vi very visibly in his own crass, clumsy way, throwing Mac and tea onto the bus. Well, she shouldn't let him. She should walk away. She should do what Martin should have done. Walk away. You're dealing with a psychopath here. Walk away. He's turning abuse upon you because he turns abuse upon everyone. So, you know, again, we see the, the, the foul influence of Faradkar and how Faradkar has, you know, acted with total contempt for long-established conventions in relation to judicial selection in Ireland. You know, but that's Fine Gael. Fine Gael don't respect our republic. They don't respect the checks and balances in place. Okay, there are two types of checks and balances. There are checks and balances that are explicitly stated in the Constitution. But then there are the conventions. And conventions are in their own way almost as important as checks and balances. Okay, conventions are not written down in the Constitution. But the convention was, for example, that a judge for the Court of Appeal or Supreme Court would be selected out of the existing judiciary in the High Court. The way that judicial selections work is that judges go into the High Court from having nearly always been senior counsel who practiced in the High Court. And in more recent years, the first example being Mr. Justice Peart, though chosen from solicitors who also practiced in the High Court. It's virtually unheard of for High Court judges to be appointed from the lower ranks of the circuit court or the district court. The judges who go into the district court and circuit court are usually, in some instances, barristers more often than not these days, solicitors who practiced at district and circuit court level. So there's quite a clear gulf between selections into the district and circuit court on the one hand, and then selections to the High Court, Court of Appeal and Supreme Court on the other. There's nothing wrong with that. That's the way it works. Um, the convention is such that the judges who are chosen for the High Court and then beyond the High Court were barristers usually and solicitors who practiced in the high court and they know the considerable distinction between high court procedure and the more summary court procedures. There's nothing wrong with that. But that's not written down in law and Fine Gael have trampled all over it. Trampled all over it. Is the Irish Times and RTE going after Varadkar over this? No, of course they're not. They have, uh, I mean, I speculate ruefully about what it would take for them to actually criticise Varadkar substantially. What does he have to do? Does he have to murder somebody live on TV? What does Varadkar have to do for them to say a bad word against him? What is this hold that Varadkar has over them? From the moment Varadkar became Taoiseach, I said he's a dud. The socks and Downing Street brothers carry on, he went on. I just said, I mean, you look back at my social media. Check my Facebook when I'm not in jail, which I am at the moment. Many thanks to my very good friends who've been posting my material. Thank you, thank you. Um, it's not as if people weren't calling Varadkar out on his profound inadequacy from the start. Because Varadkar gave a speech in Downing Street saying it was just like being in love, actually. And... That was cringe making, but it was more than that. It showed a lack of breaks. Okay, Veradkar's a psychopath. Okay, an awful lot of politicians and business leaders and these commercial heads are psychopaths. Veradkar is most certainly, most certainly not the first leading politician to be a psychopath. We accept that. But Veradkar has other problems as well, in that he seems to be quite stupid. There seems to be a low IQ there. Okay, he, yeah, he passed as a doctor. Okay, uh, the Gay Byrne lobby and RTE all think that anybody who's called a doctor immediately should get a free pass. That's another pathology in RTE, but it's a much older one. That academics, people with PhDs, like that crooked embassy elite one, Joseph, should be given a free pass. You would see this on RTE, particularly on the Gay Byrne Late Late Show. People would come on to talk about James Joyce, and you would get these lecturers in some university just reading out from a paper that they'd written. People aren't tuning in for that. People aren't tuning in for that. I remember many years ago meeting an academic, very nice man, Terence Brown, who had written the introduction to the Penguin edition of Dubliners by James Joyce. Oh, Terence Brown, I said, you wrote the introduction to that. And he was able to talk fluently and so interestingly about James Joyce and other literature. You know, you don't get him going on RTE. People like that. 
So while there's a lot of criticism of PhDs, I went to university myself. I have a BA degree in English and history, I have a master's degree in literature and philosophy, I have another master's degree in Irish film and theatre studies. I also did the H. Chippenhead as a secondary teacher. I benefited hugely from university. I enjoyed it a lot. I might, I reserve the right to do a PhD. I think I would do a PhD on how Fine Gael is a seditious influence in the state. That would be a good PhD. And I'm not joking about that. It occurred to me that would be a PhD. That Fine Gael, since 2011, has been a seditious influence in this state. Notwithstanding even the NGOs. But the NGOs, Fine Gael really boosted the NGO lobby when they took office. You know, I will, I have to do a serious video. I mean, the video I'm doing now is just me talking into a mic, extempore. Okay, I read that bit of the article. But other than that, I'm just talking. But, you know, I have a, a, a soundproofed room here where I have a studio mic. You know, I can do graphics and those kind of things. But they take a king's eternity to do. They take a king's eternity to do. And they're very painstaking to do graphics and to do dubbing over that. I've done it. I did it with that Johnny Bravo video I did a while ago. If you're a man in Dolan supermarket. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, that takes ages to, to actually construct the animation and those kind of things. I use two programs. I use PowerPoint. And I use my video editing and final rendition software is Premiere Elements. Really, really good video editing program and easy to use really it's adobe it's adobe at its best actually because adobe can be quite hard to use and also adobe crashes your computer because it's a big software i'm going to have to get a mac talk about condescending i'm going to have oh, talk about lowering cheapening myself by getting a mac but you know um doing those videos with graphics and powerpoint powerpoint is great for crude motions things shooting in and shooting out, going across the screen, up and down. PowerPoint's your only man for that. And what you do is you create your image with Photoshop and you create a transparent image with Photoshop. You then import it into PowerPoint. You create a green screen background in PowerPoint. You create the motion in PowerPoint, moving in or out or whatever. Then you save. People don't realize this about PowerPoint. You can save PowerPoint files in video file format. A lot of the people who do these PowerPoint presentations don't realize that. In terms of making short, crude graphic videos, titles, that kind of thing, PowerPoint is brilliant. It's like a lump hammer. It's crude, but it's really, you know, it's quick, it's useful, it's simple to do those kind of things. You save it with a green screen background. You then import it into your video software, the Prem for Elements, and you do cancel green. So that's how you bring your graphics in from PowerPoint into a final product in um, your, your animation video. I've digressed. I've digressed. I also avoided using bad language in this video because we're dealing with a serious newspaper, the Sunday Independent, a serious journalist, Owen Harris, and I want people to hear this because what Harris has in the newspaper today is frankly devastating. Absolutely frankly devastating. He's written about Faradkar as well. You know how Faradkar has no boundaries, how he's been undermining Micheál Martin. Faradkar undermines Micheál Martin a reason. He undermines it because Martin lets him. He undermines it because Martin lets him. This gets back to our old, old rule of psychopaths. The only way you deal with a psychopath is that you don't.